how to play Ket, the laser game. This is a brilliant game. Let me show you all about this. It comes in a real sturdy box, a little handle so you can tote it around with you. And um, this game is beautiful. Here. See? There you go. Egyptian, ancient Egyptian symbol pieces. Pyramids, scarabs, um, Anubis, and pharaohs, and sphinx. Now, let me just turn the camera down to this board here. I'm going to show you exactly how this game is played. By the way, this game is approved by all kinds of very smart institutions. Mensa. Okay, those guys are smarties, right? Um, there's all these approval stickers on the back. Many parenting groups. Some Scandinavian groups. Uh, they're smart and beautiful over there. Let me show you. It's a strategy game. It's actually a chess variant. The most interesting thing, a sort of gimmicky thing about this, which, well, it's a good gimmick, but it's also a very uh, good game. These, these little Sphinx guys have lasers on them. See that? They're, they're lasers. And each person gets one. And these guys do the capturing and ultimately try to capture the king, or actually the pharaoh. Let me show you how this works. Uh, these guys have a possible move. They have to stay in place, but they they can move just by turning left or right. Okay, they can just move by facing that way or that way. That's it. They sit very securely in their little stand there. Of course, what they're trying to get is the opposing pharaoh. Here's the silver pharaoh. Here is the red pharaoh. And these guys. Everybody besides the Sphinx is, everybody moves just like a chess king. It's very clear, any adjacent square, one move like that. The other move that these guys also have is they can turn. For a move, you can turn one of these pieces. 90 degrees, just right or left. You cannot turn them 180 degrees. That's the standard move for all the pieces, really, except these guys stay in place. Move like a chess king or turn 90 degrees. Now, what makes this game really get going, of course, is mirrors. These are the pyramids. They also move just like the, the king. They move one space in any direction, and they can turn 90 degrees. So, for instance, if this guy is over here, he is shooting his laser beam over here now. It's bouncing off of that mirror and going here like this. Here, I'll give you one on your side to see from this angle. He's bouncing off this side and going here, like this. So, you can see how the laser beam is going to start to get around. By the way, I notice these Eye of Horuses here and you, these Ankhs here. The silver Ankhs can only be occupied by silver pieces, so that gives you this special row in front of your laser to get your beam out into the um, out into the field here. And uh, then there are these various odd ones here for various reasons. They mix it up a little bit. Each player has two of these anubis, and it moves the same as the other pieces, just one space in any direction. The property of this in particular is that it can block the king. Now, anybody who is struck on a, a, on a side in general gets captured. Even if I strike my own guy, oops, I hit him on the side, he comes off the board. That's how captures are made in this game. Hit him in the back, he comes off the board, other side. However, his front is considered protected. So this guy can stand in front of the king and be protecting him. Let's say you I, you were shooting at my guy and our mirrors were in this position. It doesn't matter whose mirror is whose. When the beam of light comes, um, it, it actually comes in the direction of my king, but since it's hitting his front first, my king is considered protective. If he were turned sideways, you would strike him and take him off the board. If he were out of the way, you would strike and get my king directly, my pharaoh, and that's it. Checkmate. You win the game that way. Now, it doesn't matter whose laser hits the king. If you hit your own king, boom, 
you lose the game that way too. And in fact, the rules very quaintly inform you that um, you are out of luck if you uh, hit your own king. You lost. I like to think that your luck will extend beyond this game in particular. But that's how they put it. Hit your own king, you're out of luck. Checkmate your own self. Okay, there's one more piece you need to know about. That's the scarab. Scarab has a mirror on both sides. Now, since this only has mirror on one angle, if you hit it from a side where there's no mirror, that piece gets captured. The scarab will never be captured because it will always reflects the light. It never absorbs a beam. And so like this, you would be striking my pharaoh and winning the game. Like this, you'd be striking your own pharaoh and losing the game. Now this guy has a special property. If there's any piece around him, like on an adjacent square, he can actually trade places with it. He can't, nobody can turn while they're moving their piece. That's a separate move. But he can actually trade places with any piece, whether it's friend or foe. So that adds a little mix up to how the pieces get around, how they manipulate each other. Well, that's basically it. The game begins with one of these setups that's given in the manual. They recommend that this is the classic setup, then you can try different setups, the dynasty setup or the Imhotep setup. And then they say that you can make your own setups. Of course, I would recommend that you uh, always make them symmetrical as the examples here show. But I'm going to finish this demonstration off just showing you how the initial setup is done for the classic setup so you can get your game on as quickly as possible. Let's see, I'm going to set up the red guys. You'll notice that the um, anubises are normally set up in one way or another right by the king because they are his protectors. Oops, let's see. Get your guys set up over here. You'll notice that in this setup, it starts out with pieces right here on your line, so you're already getting your beam out into the play here. And in fact, in this setup, um, my pieces are reflecting the beam. So when, when the game starts out, your beam is actually going like this to this point right here off the board. Bing, 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 zap like that. That's just the starting position. And uh, so of course, same is true for me. As I was saying, it's all symmetrical for getting started because symmetrical is fair. kind of a curious setup. It's nothing like the beginning in chess where you're on one side and the other guy's on the other side. This is um, let me get this going right. This is a kind of mix already. So let me just tell you though, uh, I didn't mention how play proceeds. You make a move, as you do in chess, and then you shoot your beam. So every time a move is made, the beam is fired, and you see where it goes. That, that's the only time it's fired. You're not allowed to fire your beam before. You're not allowed to test it and see where it's going. You know, you have to, you know, take your move and then take your medicine. If you made a mistake, your, uh, you know, your beam goes where it goes. Sometimes you zap your own piece. Sometimes you zap your own king. So here you go, king, various pyramids, um, the scarabs. Um, I'm sorry, the, these are the sphinxes. This is your pharaoh, your pharaoh, my pharaoh. The Anubis is his protector. That's it. It's actually quite simple for starting, but you can imagine that you're going to get beams going all across the board. Stepping in or changing one will set the beam going a different direction, will affect the mirrors that come from your sphinx, will affect the mirrors that come from my sphinx. It's... Um, it's a great strategy game, and it's really different from Go or chess or anything like that. It is a form of chess, but this beaming around with lasers is completely novel. Khet, K-H-E-T. I highly recommend it. You can find the game at ancientchess.com. Thanks for listening.